Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. Week two of our Halloween collab with my scrapbooking and craft chipboard business or chipboard pieces this year. I just wanted to share what I've made. Full process video of decorating the first pieces are on my website and then I made some cards that I didn't actually do a process video for. Sorry, full process video is on the scrapbooking and craft channel, which I will link below. And all these pieces are from my website. So I will give you a look first. Here's a ghost and a coffin. They were done the same way. Basically, if I turn them over, you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see, the textured surface. I ran these through my embossing folder. Yes, you can run my chipboard through that I sell in my store through the embossing folder. It does make your machine creak and groan a bit, but bear with it. it makes some awesome things. So then I added some purple ink to these, brushed some black ink on top of the embossing so it just caught the pattern, and I put some clear embossing over the top. And they're nice and shiny. They're gorgeous. Okay, that was a hat I did in the same way as well. These are using Distress Oxide, so this one I oxidised so it's got that white chalky look. So I'm trying to get it without the shadows. What did we do next? This was, again, another embossing one. So this one, I only lightly brushed the black so I didn't want it coating all the pieces. And I love how spooky these turn out. And because the black was very speckledy, um, it's turned out really nice with the clear embossing powder over the top. What else have we done? This one's one of my favourite techniques. So this is a little house. So this one I left raw in its colour and just as it comes and added the spider webs just with a stamp and then clear embossing powder over the top and it just looks amazing. A um, couple of my favourites. This one didn't turn out as well as I'd liked but I still like it. So it's a coffin so I put silver embossing powder down first. Then I stamped, you can sort of see, see the skeleton? I sort of stamped um, on top of it, and I should have used a different ink. I didn't use a stays on ink, so I should have done that. But you can, you've got the faint figure there, and I think the faintness of it looks really cool as well. And I love how the embossing powder is not it's totally melted. Some places are bumpy. I love that about embossing powder. Yes, you, I could have gone a second coat and smoothed it out, but I didn't want to. And this one I just love. This one is gorgeous. Again, it's been embossed with the circles, but you really can't see the embossing. I scratched it over, it's got um, Distress Oxides in the background, scratched over with um, an embossing ink pad I've got, and this is a really chunky embossing powder, so we've got an awesome, awesome look, I love this one too, I love all these pieces. So this one again is done with the swirly embossing folder, and it's got um, black soot oxides, which I've oxidised, obviously, and you can see the pattern, and clear embossing powder over the top. Last but not least, this one's got a bit of mixture. This one's a bossed again. It's got in Distress Oxide, it's got the black swirl with the ink, then it's got gold embossing powder and clear embossing powder. This one I just went to town on, and I just love it. So those ones I am going to make cards for eventually. I've just run out of time this week. So I did make some cards with some other pieces as well. So this is my first card that I made. So no process videos for these cards or for these um, pieces of chipboard, unfortunately. Basically what I've just done is laid the oxide down and oxidised it. And because the oxidise has an opacity to it, it sits on top of the chipboard really well. I could never achieve the same results with Distress Inks. And the background is oxides as well and just a couple of stamps. So this one's another one. Again, um, did used a stencil with the bats in the background um, with the oxides and the oxides on the um, chipboard pieces. So this one's got a bit of pink in the background and the cobweb stamp. On top of the tombstones I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it but I've actually stamped sort of a viney stamp, um, completed, co covered the entire piece with oxide um, distress oxide and then stamped with water with a like a vine stamp just to oxidize parts of it. I will put still photos of these at the back at the end of the video because it's a bit hard to see. This one I just adore. This is gorgeous. So purple is my favorite color all year round. I love it in Halloween. So just a distress oxide background with just dripping of water. The tombstone frame all I've done is put black oxide on it and give it a spritz of water just to give it that chalky look. I love the chalky look in Halloween. And last but not least, my little black cat. Now this die cut is actually a die cut, not a piece of chipboard. So that's a die from this place that shall not be named. Basically did the oxide in the background um, with the greeny colour and then the black and stamped with um, the cobweb around the edge. 
back to the die cut on a yellow piece of paper because I really wanted it to, or did I not? I don't think I did on this one. I've made a few of these. No, I stuck him directly on top of the yellow bit so he'd really stand out. And then just black oxide on the cat. So as you can see, you can decorate this chipboard, and that's one of the ways, one of the reasons I wanted to do this collab, was show you how versatile and how many different ways you can do chipboard shapes. So these are a few shapes, and you can get so many different looks, and basically I've played with just some ink, some embossing powder, and an embossing folder, and they look so different. The cards look different when they're not, sorry, not in shot. That helps. The cards look different when they're not used with the embossing powder, and then these ones are as well. So chipboard is so versatile, basically you can put anything on it. Yes, sometimes you do need to prime it with a bit of gesso before you start if you're wanting a lighter look, but the oxides will give you a lighter look without doing that. It's all about experimenting. Thank you so much for, um, for watching my collab video. Please go visit my scrapbooking and craft site if you want to watch me make all these chipboard pieces. Unfortunately, as I said, the cards aren't a process video. I'm running out of time seriously this month. And go check out all the other collaborities. Collaborities? I think that's how you spade. All the other ladies, their channels are linked below so you can go check out what they have made with my chipboard. I'm so excited to see it. And don't tell them, but I may be stealing a few of their ideas. You never know. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.